at the same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services. We have our Sunday Bible School. At 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986 and we'll register you today. In other uh, announcements coming up coming up uh, next week um, uh, this coming Sunday rather is our um, Holy Spirit class um, uh, banquet and we hope that uh, you will join with them and be a part uh, of it all of those of you that have had taken the Holy Spirit class at any time, we want you to make sure that you will um, uh, join with them and uh, 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 have a great time. Any questions, see Brother Joe Stevenson. Coming up um, in March, the Black History Program is going to be um, set for March the 10th, and uh, we hope that uh, you will uh, join um, with us, uh, um, and uh, we know that uh, you'll be, you'll be um, blessed. Um, that um, uh, will, and then on the 17th, on the 17th of uh, March, the clip ministry uh, will be in, in, in session uh, at 10 a.m. And we want you to make sure that um, uh, you um, uh, get that, um, come and be a part of the clip ministry. And uh, uh, then on at uh, 12 noon, the Family Support Ministry um, Coordinating and Planning Session will be held at 12 noon. All members are encouraged to attend. Also, we want to uh, remind you that the Ladies Bible Class will be April the 7th. Now, this is a uh, uh, a change in the date to be April the 7th. Our speaker is Sister Lydia Stevenson Malone. Our topic is God's plan for you, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. So let's keep that in mind and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you are uh, participating. All of the ladies are participating. Then sunrise uh, 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 service uh, Sunday, uh, April the 1st. Uh, join us for the fellowship breakfast at 8.30. Uh, combined resurrection Bible class at 9.30. And combined worship 
at 10.30 uh, a.m. So let's keep that in, in mind. In weekly activities, we have today, uh, we have our high noon prayer. Brother Wayne Shimwell will be leading that. Uh, we want to encourage you to come out and, and bring your prayer request at 12 noon. The community prayer walk uh, is each Thursday at 5.30, at 5.30 p.m. We hope that you will come and join with us as we go out into our community and pray. There's a lot to pray for, and we want to pray for all of you uh, that are uh, with us. And, um, you know, we've got so much um, to, to pray for. Uh, and we hope uh, that you will come out and uh, be with us. Uh, praise be unto God. Also, also we want to uh, remind you that the Village Learning Center is open Monday through Thursday. And uh, from four to three, and uh, we want to in, uh, also encourage you to volunteer one day a week. Uh, uh, come out and be with us. You'll be blessed, uh, and uh, you'll be a blessing. God will use you to be a blessing uh, to our children. So God bless you. Praise be unto God. Also, we want to remind you that the summer day camp is uh, in uh, will be in session, and we want to urge every one of you, urge every one of you to get your children registered for this high-performing uh, academic uh, uh, and social development, uh, spiritual development um, uh, um, day camp. Those kids will have a great deal of fun. They will learn about the Lord Jesus Christ and how the Bible is the infallible word of God. But And they will improve in their academics and reading, math, and uh, writing skills. You make sure you register those children uh, for the summer day camp. Give us a call at 774-3986. 774-3986. Kids Cafe will be in session again this Thursday and Friday. And we want to encourage you to make sure that you uh, have your children here uh, on uh, Thursday and Friday for the Kids Cafe where they will uh, receive a healthy meal along with physical and educational uh, and spiritual opportunities. The food pantry will be open in March, March the 8th and uh, March the 22nd. So let's keep that in mind. Praise God. In area-wide news, the Holly Hills Church of Christ uh, Ladies Day uh, program uh, is in session uh, on March the 24th, um, uh, Holly Hills is there in, uh, um, they're in uh, um, uh, Frankfurt, and we want to encourage you to make sure that you uh, go to Frankfurt and be a part of that. We want to also remind you that tonight, you can uh, hear part two. You can hear part two of the uh, When Heroin Hits Home. If you missed part two on Saturday, you can get it uh, tonight and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Uh, on mccbroadcasting.com. That's the uh, MCC www dot mcc broadcasting praise be unto god when heroin hits home now let's remember our sick and our shut-in want to remember sister linda brano 
one of uh, Sister Bertha Frazier, Sister uh, Don Marie Sizemore, Sister uh, Melanie Stokes, Sister Mary Wood. I uh, continue to pray for Brother Earl Fleetwood. Also pray for Brother David Wilson, who's in the Audubon Hospital. Brother Dave is doing better, but he is still uh, being watched very carefully um, with uh, some uh, 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 functions with his, with his uh, um, uh, uh, eating capacity. And so we want to want to keep him in our prayers. Also pray for um, sisters, uh, our shut-ins, Sister Mamie Cartwright, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Betty Standard, Sister Vivian Wakefield, Sister Delma Wester, and uh, Brother James Frazier. Also pray for brother, for our uh, those going through dialysis and other treatments. I want to pray for our good friend, Sister Jesse Bennett, Sister Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Walls-Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner. Oh, um, and Sister uh, uh, Sandy Hammond uh, Schuler there in Evansville, Indiana. Also pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother uh, uh, Frederick Hines, and uh, Brother Brother um, uh, uh, Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, and. Uh, uh, Brother Marvin Stevenson, Jr., um, and we ask that you be pray for these. Also pray uh, for the family of Sister Joanne Reynolds. Um, Sister Joanne Reynolds' is, uh, sister informed me that they did not uh, maintain her life insurance policy, and as a result of that, Sister... Um, um, uh, Reynolds does not have burial uh, capacities and I know the church at Midwest and the church at 36 and Garland have uh, taken a, um, a special uh, 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 collection for them and um, uh, of over $700 uh, and uh, we are we are hoping that um, uh, those of you on Radio Land that have known of Sister um, um, uh, of Reynolds for a number of years, that you will consider sending in a donation. You can either send it uh, send it to the Midwest Church of Christ, and then we will send it to the funeral home that it is. Um, uh, designed to go to that's the Lion and Orchard um, funeral home. You send it to the church, and we'll give you a donation. Uh, you know, a donation slip uh, recognizing your donation. Send it to the Midwest Church of Christ, twenty one fifteen Garland Avenue. So we hope that you will consider doing that. May our God be with you. Also, we want you all to pray for a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, Brother Reggie Bronson called me on yesterday out of Cincinnati and shared with me that his dear, his dear wife and, I, and my dear sister, whom we love dearly, we, uh, we love this couple, she lost her sister on yesterday. And uh, so... We want to send out a prayer, a prayer request to Sister Linda uh, Bronson and uh, her family, and ask the God of Heaven to be with them. Would you bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Our God and our Father, it is before you and in your presence that we come, forever thanking you, O God, for the love that which you have given to us recognizing, O oh God, that we're not worthy of your, of your mercy. But we thank you for your amazing grace that saved wretches like us. Lord, we were once lost, but now we've found. We were blind, 
But now we see what amazing love you have. And we thank you. We bring our sick, our shut-in, those going through dialysis. We bring, we bring Sister Linda uh, Bronson before you. And may you be with our dear sister. And may her, her heart not be heavy, O oh God. And may you send your and dispatch her angel, that her angel may uh, comfort her. As the angels comforted Jesus, oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We want to um, give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. We want to say thank you to uh, Brother Tony and Sister Teresa. Burton, um, Sister Linda Bird, Brother Al, uh, Sister uh, Shirley Coker, Sister Rose uh, Coleman, um, Brother Alvesta Curry, Brother Tony and Sister Chiquita Curry, Brother Larry Denny, Sister Shavonda Hicks, uh, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Brother James Malone, Sister Marceline Marshall, Sister Latricia O'Bannon, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Sister Ethel Rivers, Sister Angelica Robertson, Brother William and Sister Gwen Robin Robinson, Sister Amanda Smith, Brother Kevin Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Sister Elaine Watts, Sister Marilyn Wester, Sister Tarazalyn Ward, Sister um, um, Geraldine Livers um, uh, Garvin, my Brother uh, David and Sister Rita Kamishi, our dear friends. So God bless you. Thank you so much for your generosity. Praise be unto God. Now, Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed. Are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy. 
And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 23rd division, and the verse is 3. The word of the Lord says, He renews my life and leads me along the, the right paths for his name. Tuesday, February the 27th, 2018, our daily devotion entitled Restoration from the Shepherd. Your, your shepherd, your, your shepherd, your great shepherd, knows your every need. He knows you will grow weary in your pilgrimage with him. He knows there are times when you need rest. Your shepherd, your shepherd knows just what you need. To be refreshed. At times. You need to lie. In lush. Mellows. Or beside. Quiet streams. Sometimes you need to be. Held by your shepherd. At other times. You need to enjoy the pleasures the shepherd provides. The shepherd will not always replenish you in the same way. His response to you will always perfectly correspond to your present need. As, as you follow your shepherd, there will be times when your soul becomes exhausted, perhaps because of trials you are uh, experiencing in your life, or at times temptations. You are uh, resisting in your, in your life. The persecution you face or the burdens you are carrying for others may be wearing you down. You may, you may be weary from the, the, the discipline the shepherd has brought upon you. There will be times when you feel you can go no further in your Christian pilgrimage. Your shepherd knows when you have reached this point in your life. And he always has a remedy for you. 
There may, there are many ways he can strengthen you through his word, through others, or through your circumstances. He knows what you need even better than you can understand yourself. Here's the question. Here's the question. Have you grown weary? Does your soul need to be refreshed? Don't attempt to re recover on your own. Only God knows how to heal and rejuvenate a soul. The psalmist declared in Psalms, in Isaiah rather, in Isaiah, and the chapter is 40, and the verse And the verse is 28. Isaiah the prophet declares, he says, they that wait upon the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles, with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord, the book of Psalms, the first division, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3 through 12, and here in the book of of Psalms, the 16th, the 23rd Psalm, and the verse, and the verse is three. Now let's open up our Bibles to our featured study found in the book of Luke, the 16th chapter. We started with you from verse 12 on yesterday, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read verses 12 through 18 again, that we might have continuity of thought. In verse number 12, the Bible, the Word of God says, And if ye have not, and if ye have not, been faithful in that which is another, wow. how will commit unto you trust of the riches, true riches? And if ye have been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is, is uh, your own? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one, love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. In verse 14, the Bible says, uh, And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they deri derided him. Uh, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before me. But God knoweth your hearts, for uh, that which is highly esteemed among men, among man, is abomination in the sight of God. And the law and the prophets were until John since uh, till John, since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into it. And it is easier, it is easier for 
heaven and earth to pass than one little, one tittle of uh, the law to fall. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another uh, committeth adultery and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committed away, committeth adultery. Verse 14 and 15 that we discussed with you on yesterday. We talked to you about the misunderstanding of the Pharisees and, and the religious leaders of Jesus' day. And I want to say even religious leaders today uh, is um, not a man um, getting things right today. We we just gotta know that uh, you can you can misunderstand the word of God uh, even today. Uh, we have men and women not understanding the word of God, but. Um, they misunderstood money and possessions. That's what we talked about on yesterday. Verse, verse 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. They misunderstood the new kingdom and world and social order of the day. Jesus sees the periods of Israel, the law and the prophets. He reminded them that they were, amen, uh, under, they knew about the law and the prophets. And G uh, and, and he said, they lasted up to and including the ministry of John the Baptist. All of that was a part of the, amen, the law of Moses, uh, the law that God gave to, the, to Moses and to the children of Israel. My brothers and sisters, I want us to be clear on that. You and I, as Gentiles, we are not under the law of Moses. Brothers and sisters, in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, I want you to write this scripture down. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number uh, 11, he says, remember, therefore, that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, uh, who, were, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, uh, having no hope and without God in the world. In the earth, in the world, brothers and sisters, there you need to be clear. I know that there are a group of good uh, Christ-believing people uh, who meets on Saturdays. Because they believe that the that we all are supposed to keep the 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 Jewish the Jewish Sabbath day. Um, well, I've got news for you. God has declared you and I that law didn't apply to you and I. I'm going to show you in the book of Colossians that God not only 
does it doesn't apply any longer. But if you are a born again child of God in Christ Jesus, if you have been born again, baptized believer in Christ Jesus, added to his body, I come to tell you, you are no longer that, and that's for Jews and Gentiles. Listen to me now. Jesus tore the wall down between Jews and Gentiles. Look at what he says. He says uh, in Ephesians 2.13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Jesus. For he is our peace who, uh, who hath uh, made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances to make unto himself uh, twain one new man in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I just want you to be clear. God, you, you, you know, you Jews, the law of Moses and the prophets, they were given to Israel. Uh, that, that law was not for every person alive. Gentiles, it wasn't for us. But what God did through Jesus, he broke down the wall that was between us and brought us in together, that we come together in Christ Jesus. And now, and, and so that you don't misunderstand, the Jew also, the Jew also, when Jesus came, when Jesus came, he, he, he broke the, um, the wall down and no long, and made the old law null and void. Listen to what he says. He says in, um, in Colossians 2, 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Brothers and sisters, that's what Jesus did. The cross of Christ nailed that old law to the cross. Brothers and sisters, that's, that's the message that Jesus has given to all of us. He says, you all miss, he told the Pharisees, they misunderstand the whole law of God. The law of Moses was going to end. The king, what he told them was, the kingdom is now preached, a message which does not value what a man has, but what a man is, what he is within his heart. The message now uh, centers upon the individual and his eternal pot uh, uh, potential and his life in Christ Jesus upon and upon, uh, not upon material and temporal things, not upon his nationality. Your nationality doesn't get you anywhere under Jesus. Jesus wants to, to know, do you believe that he is who he said he is? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, that diligently uh, seek him. My brothers and such sisters, it is high time, it is high time that we teach people the truth about God's word. The Bible lets us know it's about kingdom business now. 
It's all about kingdom business. And you and I, you and I must be about kingdom business. Kingdom business is what God is all about. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says to Peter, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. I'll give you the keys. Peter preached that, that sermon and opened that door on, in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, he gave us that truth. And he opened that door and men every since has been coming through that door. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 17 in verse 20 and 21 and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come he answered at them and said, The kingdom of God cometh, and with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. My brothers and sisters, we've got to, re we've got to understand that the Lord the king, said the kingdom of God is within a person's life. It's all within you because it is not any longer in a specific place. It's not any longer in a, a particular nationality of people. The kingdom of God is universal. It is all over the world. I know that sometimes we look at we look at the Church of Christ of the Bible and we say, well, if man, America, yes, it is in America. It is in the United States of America. But I want you to know the kingdom of God is all over the world. It's, it's, that's why it's, it's a kingdom. The Church of Christ is within the kingdom of God. God, the church is the body of Jesus Christ. And but the body is in the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is the universal, the universal kingdom of God. And our congregations can be here in Louisville, but we're a part of a, the greater kingdom of God. And one day, the Lord Jesus is going to come back, children. And I want us to know that he's coming back. And he's coming back to receive the kingdom. And folk will be coming in from all over the world. Jesus is not going to set foot upon this earth again. His, 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 his presence will be met in the air. The cloud that took him away will bring him back. And, every, and it will be an amazing thing because every eye will see it. Every tongue will confess and every knee will bow before the great and loving master Jesus and his coming back to receive all of us who love him, who have been born again. Oh, that's going to be a great getting up morning, y'all. Oh, yes. We'll see folk, black folks and white folks, uh, uh, Asians and others from all over the world. They'll be coming and we'll come from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Oh, that's going to be a sight to behold. Oh, and I want to be in that. I don't know about you, but I want to be in that great and glorious march into the kingdom, going up to heaven, being with the Lord, 
I don't know about you, but I want to be in that great number, that number that no man, you know, some people say when I was a, a man, I was about seven years old. My first theological teacher, uh, my good friend Cecil Black, <laughs> amen, Cecil told me, he said, I said, Cecil, how many people going to go to heaven? He said, well, I'm told 12,000. I started counting, you know. I started counting, you know. Hey, I, started, I said, Cecil, you mean only 144,000 people out of all the people that are in the world and have been in the world all the time? Only 140, but that's what they say. I said, Cecil, I don't think I'm going to make that number. I said, Cecil, where, where, where am I going? Where, where am I going? He said, well, we'll just go off into oblivion. I said, Cecil, you mean I won't know my mama no more? He said, no. I said, I don't know if I like that, Cecil. I'm so glad. I am so glad. So glad. I am so glad that I found the truth. That there's a number that no man can count. <laughs> I'm in that number. That's the number I'm in. And my brothers and sisters, I'm thankful to God. I am thankful to God that he has a number that all of us can be in if we would give ourselves over to Jesus Christ and that we would be born again by the precious blood of Jesus. Praise be unto God. I'm going to open up the prayer lines now. And if you would like to have prayer, you call us at 571-1240. Um, Sister Carmen Swain is asking us to pray for my family, Malena. Uh, Mel Vonte, uh, that I can be a good role model for them uh, to uh, uh, write them in in their lives. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, be a be a role model to them in all things and to her grandchildren. Uh, the devil is busy. Yes, Carmen, Sister Carmen. I know, baby. I know, sweetie. I know where he is. And he comes in and he knows He knows where to hit us. He knows to hit us in our family. He knows to get into our family. He knows if he can get into our families, he'll cause us to be weary. And that's why. that's why we're praying for your family. We're praying for your family, baby. And may our God strengthen you, strengthen your family. Praise be unto God. 571 1240. 571. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Blessed and highly favored. How's Brother Kevin this morning? Truly blessed and highly favored, Brother Jerry. Truly better than I deserve. Oh, praise the Lord. All of us is there. Brother Jerry, I have a, I an appointment this morning and it crept up on me. I, I call myself being prepared and ready for this, this appointment, this procedure I have to have done at the hospital on today. And I'd like a prayer for that. Amen. Amen. Thank I'd, you. I'd like a special prayer for you and the family. Thank you. I talked with my dad, and he's getting started. You know, my dad, he's a pretty old goat. He's a pretty tough guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, sir. And, and I just want to thank the congregation and everyone that sends up for him and for the doctors and recovery of my day. That's right. Praise be unto God. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sister, uh, brother 
Clarence Jordan is asking us to pray for his wife, Monique, who is having oral surgery today. And uh, Sister Monique, God bless you, sister, and our prayers are with you. Praise be unto God. Sister um, uh, Rita and David Kamishi, let's in faith thank God for the miraculous PET scan result from Sarah's Sarah Clark uh, 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 Brother Clark's daughter. Uh, so let's keep them in prayers. Amen. God, God is a great God. He's a He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. So let's uh, uh, let's keep them in our in our prayers. Praise be unto God. Five seven one twelve forty. Again, we want to lift up prayers for uh, Sister Linda Bronson there in Cincinnati, Ohio. She lost her sister yesterday, and our prayers go out to her and her dear husband, um, uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Reggie Bronson, and may they um, may they uh, find the, the peace uh, that only God can can provide to them. Praise be unto God. Uh, five seven one twelve forty. Five seven one twelve forty. And if you would like to have prayer, you give us a call. I want to pray for the uh, Sister Reynolds, Joanne Reynolds. Uh, those of you that are in Radio Land, you know that Sister Joanne Reynolds uh, has been a faithful listener for over twenty years of our ministry. She passed uh, uh, over the weekend, uh, last Friday, and uh, our sister is trying to bury her. Uh, her insurance policy had lapsed uh, due to the, uh, the misunderstanding uh, of the caregiver uh, that she had. Unfortunately, all of this is uh, uh, falling on her and and uh, they're in need of over $2,600. And, and uh, we want to um, solicit your support. Um, if you would like to uh, send, a, send a donation of any size, to the, send it to the Midwest Church of Christ, and we'll give you a donation. But if you like, you can send it directly to the Orchard Lions Funeral Home uh, in Louisville. So let's keep that in mind. Sister Joanne Reynolds passed on. And if you would like to make a donation towards her burial, so, so arrangements can be made for her funeralization. So God bless you. Thank you so much for your generosity and kindness. Also, we want to just remind you again that... Uh, We'll be having our, our prayer uh, uh, service today at 12 noon. And Thursday, we'll have our community prayer walk as we go into our neighborhood and pray for those who are, uh, that the violence, the crime, all of that will be, get out of our, our neighborhood. We pray for our neighborhood. You can join with us. Come out at 5.30. We leave at 5.30, and uh, we will be back in by 6, 6 o'clock, 6.15 at the latest. So we want you to come and, and walk with us and pray with us, and uh, you come and do that. Praise be unto God. Would you bow with me? Our Father and our God, it is again that we come before you, and we Forever thank you, Lord, for being who you are and the good and kindness that you demonstrate. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for supplying our every need. And so today, we call upon your great name, O oh God, to 
to come down and visit with us. Visit with our sick and shut in. Visit with Sister Carmen Swain. Visit with her relatives and her grandchildren, oh God. And I ask for your mercy to be with that family. And I pray that you would demonstrate some peace in their lives. I know you told us to ask, and I am fully persuaded that these are your children and you are watching over them. Thank you for being with us, uh, Brother Clark and Sister Ella's uh, standards uh, daughter, Sarah. Thank you for the good that you have and mercy that you have demonstrated to her. Lord, we praise your name. Go with us today, O oh God, and give us your strength. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today, and I've enjoyed being with you, and I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this, our God loves you, and so do I.